Good morning, folks. We've got a look at the sun, weather, the moon, asteroid deflection, cosmology, and stellar nova. We're going to begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day relatively quiet. Coronal holes as large dark patches, and the bright point near the middle, a little sunspot group. The active region is having small-scale crackling, but is not growing, not becoming magnetically complex, and the umbral cores are actually not even really showing down at the photosphere. The sunspot has not even produced an X-ray event that takes us up out of A-class flare range, the lowest we do have. Solar wind here, from the peak near 850 kilometers per second, middle panel in purple, we have now descended back under 600 kilometers per second as the stream fades off. Geomagnetic conditions becoming more quiet as well. Top two quakes of the last day struck the center of the Atlantic, one dead center and the other way north on the central ridge, spreading the ocean bit by bit. Taking a quick look at Dorian, utterly stalled next to Florida, virtually no movement for more than 12 hours. This is the geo color overlay with the lightning detector as well, showing how some of the more energetic aspects of the storm aren't even anywhere near the eye wall. Flooding continues in India, where in addition to the millions of people affected, the animals are feeling it as well. It seems a lot of people forgot they're going to need those animals when they get back home, when they abandon them. Let's go to the news, and the Hera asteroid deflection mission is creeping closer and closer. They will attempt to impact the asteroid and begin to steer it off course, as well as study the breadth of the impact, depth, damage, etc. Quick note on the moon. They say there is almost certainly platinum and palladium hidden under the surface. Well, why not gold, silver, and diamonds, just to make sure you get that funding to go back and check. Up next, we're going way out to the Centaurus A cluster. Top researchers in the subfield, including Oliver Mueller and Marcel Pulowski, who made a brief appearance in our cosmology movie, have spent years now learning more and more about the group's satellite dwarf galaxies. The more they look, the more they are sure that the models using cold dark matter cannot produce the observed distribution of objects. In this case, they found more missing bright ones and too many of the smaller ones, something else working its magic there over time. A couple dark matter scientists got excited back in April about the point source data near the galactic center, claiming there was a good reason to think it was dark matter. Today, the NPTF team strikes back and says, no, it's not dark matter, they are real matter light point sources, as they had initially described. Interesting two papers there. And last but not least, we're at M82, the Cigar Galaxy, and taking another look at Supernova 2014J. They say they are certain this was a Type 1A supernova, but that's a problem. Because while all models and guesses say those must be binary-driven nova, they have yet to actually see twins in any such region. They keep discovering that they are single progenitor blasts and we can add another one to the list today. When all the data suggests a companion is needed, the universe keeps showing us that's not the case. And of course, this leads us into what in the world could trigger a singlet star to have a shell release, a micronova, or something bigger like 2014J. In our cosmic disaster movie last month, we laid it out for the sun and the cyclical disaster of Earth. That movie, in fact all three movies from last month, are linked in the description box right below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.